naming traditions across multiple cultures. In today's America, where children are named after reality show stars and parents christen their offspring Kaylee and Jackson, it's hard to imagine such a thing as naming traditions. But not that long ago, parents routinely followed patterns for passing on given names from generation past. The traditions varied by country, but if you know your cultural heritage, you often can use these patterns to make educated guesses about the brick walls in your past. Just because your first-born British ancestor was named John, doesn't prove his paternal grandfather shared that name, of course. But once you have a name to investigate, you can research possible connections. Here, then, is a look at traditional first name patterns in some of the most common ancestries that found their way to these shores. British Islands Because British colonies made up so much of early America, their first name traditions often continued in the colonies. This scheme was common in England, especially in the 18th and 19th centuries. The first son was named after father's father, the second son after the mother's father, the third son after the father, the fourth son after the father's eldest brother, the first daughter after the mother's mother, the second daughter after the father's mother, the third daughter after the mother, and the fourth daughter after the mother's eldest sister. In a family where this pattern would lead to duplicate names, both grandparents were named Robert, for example, the parents might skip to the next in line. In this case, the second son would be named after the father. By the 16th century, this English naming pattern was also common in Wales. The Irish followed this scheme too, with a fifth son typically named after the father's second eldest brother or mother's eldest brother. A fifth daughter might similarly be christened after the mother's second eldest sister or the father's eldest sister. Scottish families often followed this pattern, though sometimes the parents' names were skipped for the third son or daughter going right to the grandparents. Some traditions then christened later children first for the father's and mother's paternal grandparents for boys and their maternal grandparents for girls. Other Scots gave precedence to the father's paternal side and mother's maternal side for sons, but honored both paternal grandmothers first for daughters. Some Scottish traditions provided for as many as 14 offspring of each gender just in case working their way similarly through the parents' great-grandparents or the father's first for boys and the mother's first for girls. French and French Canadian French families followed a similar naming pattern to the British with a few twists. The first son was typically named after the father's father, the second son after the mother's father. The first two daughters were named after their grandmothers, but the order varied depending on whether grandma was still alive. Deceased grandmothers got precedence. Most children were given hyphenated first names, which could cross genders. A boy might be named Pierre Mary in honor of his female patron saint. In French Canada, Many boys were named Joseph something and many girls named Mary something in honor of the Oli family. Italian From innkeepers to inventors, everyone has a patron saint. Italian villages adopt them too and the locals traditionally celebrated their saint with an annual feast day. In America, Italian immigrants continued to observe their patron designated days. Neapolitan's honor street general, Sicilian from Palermo Lodge Street Rosilia, and in Torino, John the Baptist Rule. If you know your Italian ancestor traditional naming patterns, you can use the name of Bambini to guess the parents' and grandparents' identities. The first son was named after the father's father. 
the second son after the mother's father, the third son after the father, the first daughter after the father's mother, the second daughter after the mother's mother, and the third daughter after the mother. Italians also use necronymics, naming a baby after a deceased sibling. So if you see two or more Anna Francis's in one family, don't assume it's a mistake. Because parents choose names to honor older generations, they pass a moniker on to their next born in the first child given the name died. Hispanic families, many of these name traditions combine to a pile up of given names. At baptism, a child might be given one or two extra names, including the name of the saint associated with the baptismal day. But the child might never be called by the first baptismal name. In church records, the parish priest often added to the child's name a superfluous. Jose or Maria that she will have to learn to ignore. In Poland, Polish families adhere to an entirely different first name tradition, one that might help you narrow down when an ancestor was born. Catholic parents typically name their children after the saint whose feast day fell close to the child's birth or baptismal day. So a boy born in early August, for example, might be named for Saint Dominic, whose feast day is traditionally celebrated August 4th. Similarly, children born in Ukraine and Russia were named for saints on the Byzantine calendar, which differed from the Roman Catholic feast days. If a girl's birth or baptismal date fell close to a male saint's day, she might be still given that name, feminized by adding an A to the end. As with many immigrants, those from Hungary often change their own names to be more American. Anglicizing the spelling, choosing an English equivalent or picking a new name entirely. For example, Uncle John might have been Hanos in the old country. Hungarians usually have just one given name, but be aware that they commonly put their family names before their given names, to the first of most Western cultures. So for example, Jabo Mihaly would be the Hungarian equivalent of Michael Taylor. Women often won't appear in records by their own name, but by adding the suffix ne to the husbands. For example, Great Grandma might show up as Kovac Matashne instead of Anna Kovac. Not surprisingly, Jewish family's naming tradition in Eastern Europe differs from the Christian neighbors. Biblical names were of course popular in beginning in the 1200s. Many Jewish children were given the names, religious name to be used in the synagogue, plus an everyday secular name. In Jewish tradition, these names are not assigned until the 8th day after the child's birth, which means birth certificates may read simply male or female. Jewish children were often named for ancestor, though not in a hard and fast pattern. Ashkenazic Jewish children were never named for a living ancestor. Rather, a child may be given a secular name that honors a recently deceased ancestor, often with a similar but not identical name. Families in the Netherlands might follow this pattern. The first son was named after the paternal grandfather the second son after the maternal grandfather, the first daughter after the maternal grandmother, the second daughter after the paternal grandmother. Given the prevalence of infant mortality, these four names recycled as necessary were often enough. In a family with all daughters, a third child might receive a feminized version of a grandfather's name, such as Wilhelmina or Hendrika. In German settlements, in Pennsylvania, some experts have identified three different naming patterns. One follows the British scheme for the first three sons and daughters, switching to great grandparents for the fourth through seventh of each gender, with precedence to the paternal side throughout starting with the father's paternal grandfather. The second pattern is the same for boys, but switches precedence for daughters, naming number four after the mother's paternal grandmother. 
A third pattern inserts the parents of the siblings in position 3, before the parents visit themselves. Both Dutch and German families typically give children three Christian names, Maria Wilhelmina, for example. This may have been to keep a favorite name in the family. All the sons, for instance, might be named Johan plus a second name. In the daily life, the child was usually called by the second name, though sometimes Dutch parents might choose a third name for every day use. Traditionally, Greek families name their children after the father parents, and then the mother's parents. In this male-dominated naming scheme, girls also can be named after their grandfathers. Dimitra for Grandpa Dimitris. The father's name often was added as a middle name. In Scandinavian, children's given names were generally assigned as follows. The first son was named after the father's father, the second son after the mother's father, the third son after the father, often resulting in a double name as in Hakun, Hakun son, due to patronymics. The first daughter after the mother's mother, the second daughter after the father's mother, the third daughter after the mother.